Hey, this is Chase with Houston Frogs. Today I'm going to be showing you the proper way to build a dark frog vivarium. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we have our glass tank. I've actually already put in the hydroponic lica for our drainage layer. That's going to be our first layer. Uh, this is actually one of Exeter's newer uh, dark frog specific tanks. Uh, they advertise it for dark frogs. There are some things I would change personally. For instance, this mesh on top, this is way too much ventilation for dark frogs. Uh, this does need to have glass put on the top. That way you don't have constant humidity issues for your dark frogs. Uh, now if you do have ufagas or something like that, I would cover up all but maybe an inch of this uh, screen on top. But for the Lucamels we're going to be putting in this tank, this ventilation at the front is more than ample. So anyways, we have this uh, drainage layer put in. That's about a gallon of hydroponic lica. We're then going to be putting in the secondary layer, which is going to be our mesh barrier. This is going, just going to prevent the substrate from going down into that drainage layer and clogging it up. So go ahead and have that installed. Okay, then we're going to be putting in calcined clay. Now this calcined clay is going to make a secondary drainage layer, again increasing the thickness of the drainage layer, but also helps to seal this bomb drainage layer as well. And I like this because this prevents frogs from wandering down into the drainage layer by accident, which every once in a while happens to people. Uh, it also helps prevent isopods and things like that from entering down in here. Um, so this is a little extra feature that I like to include in all of my tanks. So we're going to go ahead and spread this out until we have a relatively even layer. Again, it's mostly going to be sealing around the sides. There we go. So the mesh is pressed up against there. Okay. And then we're going to be adding in the substrate. I'm going to go ahead and start to get that added. All right, went ahead and sped that up for you. Now again, I really do not like how short this dam is. This is uh, preventing you from being able to put a thicker uh, layer of substrate in, which quite frankly, I really like a thicker layer of substrate because that maximizes the area for waste dispersal. It maximizes the uh, area for your microfauna to be able to proliferate in, which is a secondary food source for the frogs. And also the more microfauna you have, the variability you have to be able to dispose of waste from the frogs or anything else that's decaying in the vivarium. Uh, and also it just, it's very limiting. Um, if you want to put bigger plants, aeroids, things like that in here that have a deeper root system, this uh, just does not allow you to really have a deep enough substrate layer. Um, but anywho, besides, besides that point, um, we're going to go ahead and go with our next step after the substrate, which is the beneficial microbial inoculant. Now this is a blend of 16 different uh, beneficial fungi and bacteria, they're going to essentially jumpstart your vivarium from day one. We're going to go ahead and take out the vial here. This has all the information if you'd like to read about the different types of beneficial bacteria and fungi that are included in this inoculant. We're going to go ahead and sprinkle this into the substrate here. That's all you do. And then we're going to mist down the substrate pretty heavily just hydrating the substrate for the next step, which is adding in the cleanup crew. Alrighty. Then we're going to be adding in some springtails. These are some of our temperate springtails on clay. Springtails are particularly fungivores. They're very tiny, as you can see. They're going to help to eat any type of fungi that's going to begin to grow in the vivarium, whether it be uh, beneficial or harmful, but that keeps the fungi in check. They're also going to add a, a they're going to be a secondary food source for the frogs, and they're actually very high in fat, so they're good for the frogs to eat as long as it's not in excess. Then we're going to be adding in our dwarf white isopods. You really don't need a ton of these isopods. The uh, dwarf white isopods particularly are parthenogenic. So each one can actually reproduce, and they do reproduce very quickly. Now the isopods are going to be taking care of waste, but they're also, again, a secondary food source for the dark frogs. And they're very high in calcium. Again, very good for the dark frogs as a snack. 
So then we're going to be putting in our plant selection. There we go. I went ahead and sped things up so you wouldn't have to watch me planting all these plants in here. It's very important to have a lot of foliage in here. Now this will grow in with time and more plants can be added. This is actually for a client. They just wanted the basic uh, plant kit. So that's what's been put in here. But the more foliage that you have, which again, these grow pretty quickly, uh, they're going to be adding to the humidity of the vivarium. So they're going to be transpiring during the day, giving off both oxygen and water. And that water is going to help to raise the humidity. So if you ever have humidity issues, the biggest thing to look at is the amount of ventilation. And then you're going to look at the plants as well. And that's going to be in combination with your misting regime, of course. The more you mist, the more humid it is. But if you have too much ventilation or if you don't have enough plants, then those are the two things that stabilizes your hum humidity in between misting. So we're going to next put in the leaf litter. So these are sanitized oak leaves. So you don't want to get anything from an area that has pesticides. Uh, you don't want to just throw leaves from the wild in there. You, you do want to at least bake them or boil them, uh, put them through an autoclave if you have an autoclave. Just any way that you can to kill any types of pests that may be in the leaves themselves. As a rule of thumb, you really never want to put anything in your vibram from the outdoors unless it's first been at least sanitized. And by sanitized, I mean you're killing most pests, you're killing most bacteria, most fungi, but you're not eradicating all of it. Um, if we wanted to truly sterilize this, you know, I put this in the autoclave that um, 15 psi for about 30 minutes, and then it would be 100% sterile. There wouldn't be a single thing on it. Um, but it's not really necessary. Um, we just mainly want to at least bake the leaves or boil the leaves to kill 99% of what may be on them. We want to put in a thick layer leaf litter as well. Uh, you have to remember that the leaf litter is going to help to lock in that moisture into the substrate. It's going to keep the substrate from drying out too fast. It's also going to help to create a microclimate where if it becomes uh, too hot or too cold in the vivarium itself uh, or if it becomes too dry in the vivarium, the dart frogs can actually hide within the leaf litter to conserve moisture or to be able to conserve heat or to be able to stay cooler. Uh, this is actually one of the main ways that they survive in the wild. Uh, even when it gets to be really hot is they're able to actually go underneath the leaf litter. We'll also go through the leaf litter uh, to forage for different things like springtails, isopods, uh, and they'll also use it as a hiding place as well if they ever feel uh, threatened. So we have a nice thick layer. This leaf layer is also going to break down over time, adding nutrients into the substrate for your growing plants. And it's also going to be saying that, yes, you're going to have to replace it once a year, but for the health of frogs, it's going to be best because not only does it have all those benefits, but also keeps the frogs from contacting the substrate directly, which substrate can stick to the frogs and stress them out. So it's really important to have all the substrate 100% covered as much as you can by leaf litter. All right, we're going to go ahead and mist this down because these leaves are pretty dry. There we go. And that is a very simple bioactive vivarium made for dart frogs. Uh, again, the last thing that we're going to be doing is putting a glass top on here to seal this off so we don't have this huge area of ventilation here where the humidity is just blowing out the vivarium. Uh, but other than that, this is ready for a light and to be put on the shelf for the frogs. Uh, now with the way that's been built with the uh, beneficial microbial inoculant, you can wait a week if you'd like. You can wait a month if you'd like for things to grow in before adding the frogs. You can also add the frogs in the same day. Uh, I will be answering a lot of different questions in another video so far as uh, a lot of not just myths, but why we used to do certain things in the hobby and why we don't do those now. But especially with that beneficial microbial inoculant, it's not necessary to wait for those uh, fungal and bacterial cultures to establish like it used to be for about a month. Uh, as long as you make sure that, again, your ventilation is correct and you make sure that you're constantly monitoring the humidity, 
uh, make sure that it doesn't get too dry in here, monitoring the health of frogs, make sure that they're active. Then you can put the frogs in the same day that you build the vivarium and just make sure and monitor them really closely for the first couple of weeks. Just make sure the humidity is spot on. Just make sure that they're active, that they're eating. And of course, if you have any questions, you can always give me a call and I'd be happy to walk you through the steps. Anyways, guys, uh, this is Chase the Houston Frogs. I hope you enjoyed watching this uh, very simple uh, build for dart frogs today. Uh, feel free to contact me and uh, feel free to check us out at HoustonFrogs.com. Thank you.